In the first three months of 1959, the Atlas Project was advanced in all areas of development. The increased tempo of the program was highlighted by an expanded production capability. Achievements in research and design. The delivery of 11 missiles to test and operational sites. Five flight tests. and progress toward military utilization of the weapon by the Strategic Air Command. The story of this progress will be related by the men closest to the project. First, a report on flight test activity. The last two of the B-series missiles were launched from pad 14 and 11. The first to go was missile 13B on 15th of January. Thirteen B was the first Atlas designed to go the full five thousand five hundred nautical mile range with an estimated re-entry vehicle. The missile was similar to 12B, which attained this distance in November 1958. Prior to launch, landline measurements showed all systems correctly operating. Launch was good, and 13B apparently was on its way to a successful flight. At 100 seconds of flight, the missile started to oscillate and roll. This was followed by a decrease in propulsion system performance then by complete missile instability, and eventually by a complete propulsion system failure. Because of its objectives, 13B was stripped to minimum instrumentation, and a conclusive analysis of the failure could not be made. The final launch of the B-series was on February 4th. This was 11B, designated to impact 3,122 nautical miles downrange. The ignition, release, and liftoff went on schedule. All missile systems operated satisfactorily during flight. All 42 primary and secondary test objectives were satisfied. Nose cone impact was on target. The first seven missiles of the B-flight program satisfied all major objectives for the series. Extra objectives were set up for the remaining three, 10, 13, and 11B. These flights gave us many additional items of information. Missile 4C, the second series B outlet to be flight tested, was successfully launched from Complex 12 on January 27th. Although the Mod 3 guidance system failed, the flight control system stabilized and guided the missile during the powered portion of the flight. Separation of the re-entry vehicle did not occur as a result of the guidance system failure. The complete vehicle re-entered the atmosphere with impact indicated by the Azusa system some 43 miles beyond the planned range of 4,268 nautical miles. Re-entry was sighted from Ascension Island. The fourth Atlas launch during this period was missile 5C. 5C was launched after a double free countdown from Pad 12 on February 20. After liftoff, the flight went according to plan until booster separation at 151 seconds. At this point, the booster fuel staging disconnect or associated plumbing failed during the staging sequence. When the propellant dropped below the fuel port, fuel tank pressurization was lost. The greater pressure in the liquid oxygen tank ruptured the intermediate bulkhead. 
At 172 seconds, the missile exploded. The fifth missile launched this quarter was 7C on March 18. This missile was the first to carry the RVX-2 re-entry vehicle. The RVX-2 is a high-speed, ablating-type nose designed for complete recovery. Atlas 7C was launched after a countdown of two and one-half hours. properly until 85 seconds of flight, at which time the guidance system failed. At 129 seconds, the boosters shut down prematurely. Boost of separation came at 151 seconds from a backup signal initiated by the missile program. The sustainer engine continued to operate for 282 seconds. Verniers, an additional 29 seconds. Considerable missile instability was evident from the time of booster shutdown to the termination of powered flight. Because of excessive missile instability, impact position could not accurately be determined. No attempts were made to recover the RVX-2 vehicle, which did not separate from the missile. In a 22-month period, beginning in June 1957, 22 Atlas missiles have been launched from Cape Canaveral. At the end of the quarter, Atlas 3D, the first of a new series, was being prepared for flight from Complex 13. In preparation for future flights, existing launch pads were being modified for D-series tests and to accommodate Atlas missiles with additional upper stages. The flight test program has been supported since June 1956 by the combined static test facilities at Sycamore Canyon and Edwards Missile Static Test Site. Progress in the static test program was highlighted by the successful firing with 2C at Sycamore Stand 1. From 307, Final hot firing of missile 2C was accomplished on January 9, 1959. In this round, all basic C static test objectives were completed. 260 measurements recorded during the test revealed that all systems operated satisfactorily. 2C was removed from stand one January 22nd after a series of cold tests, and we started converting the site for D-series testing. The remaining C-Series static test objectives were assigned to Edwards Missile Static Test Site, Stand 1A. During this quarter, we have set up this test stand to evaluate the C-Series missile systems under actual firing conditions. The missile was 6C, re erected in the stand January 29. The first hot run was successfully accomplished on March 4, duration 22 seconds. On March 27, a full duration staging run was well underway. After approximately 29 seconds of main stage, the fire started in the thrust section. At 43 seconds, cutoff was initiated by the sustainer hydraulic switch, which sensed insufficient pressure. Ten seconds later, missile 6C was destroyed by an explosion. This accident did not affect the schedule of the overall test program as the major C-series test objectives had been completed with missile 2C at Sycamore. At present, a committee is making a complete investigation of this accident 
and their report is still pending. The first Series D propulsion systems test with the MA-2 engines were conducted by Convair Astronautics at stand 1-4. During the quarter, six hot firings were conducted, beginning with a five-second shakedown run on January 20. The last test of the quarter was a scheduled 300-second staging run on March 24. Sustained a cutoff occurred at 278 seconds. Two seconds later, the fire broke out, damaging the thrust section and stand. At present, plans call for the removal of the MA-2 propulsion system and conversion to MA-3 Series E testing. The primary objectives of the MA-2 test plan were essentially accomplished. The remaining MA-2 engine objective will be completed with missile 2D at Sycamore. At Stan 1-1 this quarter, we started the scheduled series of bending mode tests. Preliminary tests checked out the basic structure prior to the erection of missile 7B on February 2. A second stage mass was added to the Atlas airframe to determine the dynamic characteristics of an upper stage configuration similar to the Atlas Able vehicle. The missile was supported in the tower by an attachment which would not restrict the in-flight simulations. Support at the base was by means of cylinders attached to the gimbal points of the booster thrust chambers. The cylinders are designed to produce flight control movements. The operational propellant handling site, stand 1-95, was modified during the first part of the quarter. The tower was structurally reinforced to accept the test missile erected on February 13. The light skin tank will be used in phase three tests for extended evaluation of the operational propellant transfer system. Very satisfactory results have been obtained during the phase one and phase two tests, from which definite recommendations have been made for developing operational procedures. Phase three tests will begin in April. Sycamore Stand 2 has been modified to support the D-Series test program. The task was completed this quarter, and Missile 2D was erected from the tower on January 31st. Ground support equipment has been continually evaluated during static testing, resulting in significant improvements in design and capability of this equipment. Okay, down there. Okay. Missile instrumentation has been greatly improved by the adoption of the scale factor method of transducer calibration and by the use of FM data recording tapes. These improvements have eliminated many steps required previously between each firing. 2D was the first D-series missile to be static fired. This was successfully accomplished on March 19th. At the end of the quarter, 2D was being prepared for a full duration firing. The second D-series static missile was assigned to Sycamore Stand 1. 9D arrived at the site March 20th and was erected in the service tower four days later. From June 1956 to the end of March 1959, 11 missiles and six R&D engines were static fired at Sycamore and Edwards. The data accumulated is equivalent to 55 flight tests. In the Convair Division of General Dynamics Corporation, the status of Atlas progress is most evident in the manufacturing areas. Production of D missiles has progressed rapidly here in Building 5. At the end of March, missiles 27D through 30D 
were being fabricated in the major fixture area. Manufacturing techniques developed in the production of A, B, and C series research and development missiles have been adopted for the D series production atlas. The use of optical tooling methods has been increased in the setup of tooling fixtures and jigs and in many phases of missile tank construction. The use of new materials combined with modern manufacturing methods is most evident in the production of the D-series thrust section. The major components of the booster stage airframe are manufactured at Convair Fort Worth. Production here illustrates the increased use of laminated plastics in missile structures. Development of this material represents a significant accomplishment in missile progress. Engine fairings such as this are stronger per unit of weight than if constructed of metal with the added advantage of flexibility. Progress in design and fabrication of booster heat shields has resulted in a product of great strength, lighter weight, and more than adequate insulating characteristics. In another plant area, production of the thrust cylinder is keeping pace with production schedules. The lightweight section, which transmits 300,000 pounds of thrust symmetrically to the missile tanks, is being fabricated for operational missiles. Construction is of high-strength aluminum. During the last week of the quarter, components for missile 26D were being checked for proper alignment. Progress on the Atlas, as well as other missile programs, has been dependent upon advances in electronics. Keeping pace with missile fabrication is the manufacturing of electrical components and equipment for use on D-series missiles. In the electronics manufacturing area, some 120 airborne canisters were produced this quarter. Assembly line techniques have been adopted for the production of the Azusa transponder package. This quarter, 34 separate units were manufactured by astronautics for Atlas and other missile projects. Additional airborne units manufactured include range safety command and power supply packages, 16 units produced, propeller utilization comparator and mandrels, 16 units produced, Telemetry accessory package, 10 units produced, and the autopilot system consisting of two separate packages, the programmer integrator servo amplifier and gyro system with 21 units each produced during this quarter. Missile system checkout sets located beneath this dock are also manufactured by Convair Astronautics. 11 racks make up this unit which checks out missile system performance under simulated flight conditions. Five D-series units were completed this quarter. Two were delivered to the Atlantic Missile Range, one to Vandenberg Air Force Base, and two were retained in the factory for missile checkout. Three units of blockhouse equipment, consisting of 16 consoles each, and 12 Azusa checkout units were also produced during the first three months of 1959. Test lab activities during this quarter centered on D-series missile components and systems. At the autopilot test stand, a study was made of autopilot responses to simulated flight conditions. Signals to the test stand were initiated by electronic computers, which duplicated the effects of flight forces. The test stand is adjacent to the missile assembly area. This test was run to determine the dielectric strength of potting resins. Selected materials will be used in assembly of missile servo mechanisms. Cycle tests of the fuel line bellows were prompted by a problem which showed up in the flight test program. Information from these tests is being used in design and production of D-series fuel bellows.
The materials lab conducted a series of compression tests on a newly designed structural material. The bulkheads of later D-series missiles will be made with this sandwich type material, replacing the honeycomb construction currently in use. Vibration tests included a structural evaluation of the Vernier Solo Hydraulic Power Supply Unit, which operates during the last few seconds of powered flight. This test subjected a specimen to maximum vibration conditions encountered in flight. The CVAP centrifuge was used in checking reliability and endurance of electronic and mechanical airborne systems. This is a missile battery inverter which supplies electrical power after launch. The unit was subjected to linear acceleration and shock forces it might encounter in flight. A test stand was built at the rear of the manufacturing building for development and proofing of the horizontal launcher. During the report period, equipment was subjected to a wide range of environmental and operating conditions. In this test, critical parts were soak tested, simulating the effect of adverse weather conditions. Extensive testing will seek to eliminate any possible bugs in the system, and operating procedures will be developed. At Point Loma in San Diego, progress was highlighted by two new developments. Tower D was used for simulated launch and functional testing of the D-series thrust section fairings. This section of the booster incorporates clamshell doors at the launcher arm attach point. In this test, a calculated liftoff rate was used to simulate launch, and instrumentation evaluated the effectiveness of the closing mechanism. An environmental chamber has been completed at this site. It is large enough to accommodate the entire missile on its support trailer. This trailer is the newly designed operational model for D-series and later missiles. Tests were run under specified environments with accurate control of temperature and humidity. The Arnold Development Center's wind tunnel at Tullahoma, Tennessee is among facilities outside the San Diego area which are used for specialized testing. A 1 30th scale functional model was installed here for Mach 4 studies of flame attenuation and hot gas recirculation. These tests also provided data for the design and verification of the sustainer exhausterator. The training program for Air Force personnel conducted here at Barnard School by Convair Astronautics has been well established. By the end of March, some 400 students have attended one or more of the 15 courses offered. After a period of classroom, laboratory, and shop instruction, these Air Force missilemen will receive integrated weapon system training at Vandenberg Air Force Base. On completion of both phases, they will form the nucleus of an Air Force training program to be established at Shepherd and Chinook Air Force Bases. The scope of our program has been expanded with the delivery of two missiles to the shelter building early in January. Missile 2B, in the background, will retain its basic configuration and is being used to familiarize students with missile system operation and later checkout procedures. For shop training, parts were taken from Missile 1B. Three missiles were shipped to Vandenberg Air Force Base during this quarter. 4D left on February 19th. Missile 6D was shipped nine days later. Last to go during this period was 8D, which arrived at Vandenberg on March 20. Four D and six D had been checked out and were in place on the launch pads by the end of the quarter. 
8B was scheduled for erection at Launcher C early in the second quarter. During the latter part of March, technicians were preparing the complex for this event. At Launcher B, Convair and Air Force personnel were conducting systems checks on ground support equipment. The first Atlas missile flight from Vandenberg will be from Complex 576-A-1. This will be Missile 4D, scheduled to go in mid-May. About a mile to the north is Complex 576-B. Progress in construction at the end of the quarter was lagging behind the forecasted schedule. This lag was largely in the area of propellant loading systems. Large items of support equipment located outside the launcher building at this complex have been installed. In Cheyenne, Wyoming, construction of the second operational Atlas base is progressing. At Warren Air Force Base, World War II barracks are being torn down to make way for the Atlas Squadron maintenance area. Construction will start soon on facilities which will service missiles and equipment for four launching sites around Cheyenne. This area is presently used as a depot for equipment which will be installed at launch sites now under construction. Completion of the Warren Air Force Base facilities will require approximately 129,000 tons of building materials. By the end of March, the Corps of Engineers was well along on Complex 564-A and 564-B, each of which consists of three launchers and a control center. During the first week in March, a development engineering inspection of the E-Series missile was held at Convair Astronautics. Significant design improvements have been made in the Series D and are slanted toward greater missile reliability and maintainability. A major change in the missile configuration is the Mark III re-entry vehicle, designed and built by the General Electric Company. This second generation nose cone and warhead has been greatly improved in performance and operability. Time of re-entry has been decreased from 120 seconds to 50 seconds. And the Mach number at impact increased to four. This is due mainly to the adoption of an ablative heat protection system. The power-driven lift trailer facilitates mating of the re-entry vehicle to the missile. On the opposite side of the missile, instrumentation for the range safety system is located in the B-1 pod. Here, considerable improvements in packaging has been made as in all E-series systems. This repackaging simplifies manufacturing operations. To my left, at the aft end of the B-2 pod, is a missile guidance set of the ARMA All Inertial Guidance System. This set consists of three units, a missile guidance computer, a gyro-stabilized platform, and a control unit. With this system, Atlas has salvo firing capabilities and is provided with the highest degree of accuracy and reliability despite adverse atmospheric conditions or enemy countermeasures. A major improvement in missile maintainability has been made in the E-Series booster structure. Many of the pneumatic, hydraulic, and propulsion system components have been relocated or eliminated. Design improvements in the rocket design MA3 propulsion system have been a major factor in this area. The booster engine, which formerly used a central power package with two several pumps and a single gas generator, has been repackaged to include a separate gas generator for each turbo pump assembly. The engine starting sequence has been simplified to eliminate certain operational functions and missile hardware items. Maintenance is simplified by access through removable external fairings. These changes eliminate the need of demating for the removal, replacement, or rework on all propulsion system hardware and related plumbing. Displays featuring E-series systems, components, and support equipment were presented during the inspection by associate and subcontractor teams. Among these was Convair Astronautics concept for the 9x1 Integral Launch Complex. Each complex contains provisions for missile service, erection, and launch independent of a central launch operations building. A complement of nine such complexes built underground and dispersed over a wide area is planned for Fairchild Air Force Base. A 
decoy system built by Aeronutronics featured the pod bearing with balloon and dart ejection tubes exposed. This small package contained in the tube is ejected at a specific time during missile flight and inflates to Mark III re-entry proportion. It then provides a proper radar return. As they re-enter the atmosphere at 400,000 feet, they are destroyed by excessive heating. Graphite darts are also ejected and re-enter at the same ballistic trajectory of the re-entry vehicle to an altitude of 50,000 feet. Developmental testing has already begun on E-series systems and ground support equipment. The test program planned for this new Atlas series is supported by experience gained from earlier programs and by the advancements made in present test activity. This activity is directed toward the earliest operational employment of Atlas by the Strategic Air Command.